Okay. Now give the heading overheads. Give the heading overheads. Stop talking. Shh. Learning objectives. Give the heading overheads. Learning objectives. Learning objectives. The ten are you following, huh? Okay, learning objectives. Point number one. Don't talk. I'm hearing voices. Don't talk. Point number one. Primary distribution of overheads. Primary distribution of overheads. Primary distribution of overheads. Primary distribution of overheads. Point number two. Secondary distribution of overheads point number two secondary distribution of overheads secondary distribution of overheads inside the right a inside point two right a point a direct redistribution method direct redistribution method Direct redistribution method. Point B. Step ladder method. Step ladder method. STEP step ladder method. Or step cost method. Step ladder method. Or step cost method. C. Point C. Repeated distribution method. Repeated distribution method. Repeated distribution method. D. Simultaneous equation method. Point D. Simultaneous equation method. Simultaneous equation method. Simultaneous equation method. Can I proceed on? No. Point number two over. What is point number two? Secondary distribution. In which you have A, B, C and D. Point number three. Point number three. Absorption of overheads. Absorption of overheads. A, B, S, O, R, P, T, I, O, N. Absorption of overheads. Absorption of overheads. Point number four. Point number four. Six different types of absorption rates. Six different types of absorption rates. Point number four. Six different types of absorption rates. Six different types of absorption rates. Can I proceed? Point number five. Point number five. Predetermined absorption rate versus predetermined absorption rate versus actual absorption rate. Predetermined absorption rate versus actual absorption rate. Predetermined absorption rate versus actual absorption rate. Point number six. Concept of. Point number six. Concept of under and over absorption. Concept of. Under and over absorption. Concept of under and over absorption and its treatment. 
in cost accounts. Concept of underrun over absorption and its treatment in cost accounts. Concept of underrun over absorption and their treatment in cost accounts. Point number seven. Point number seven. Blanket rate versus blanket rate versus departmental absorption rate. Blanket rate versus departmental absorption rate. Blanket rate versus departmental absorption rate. We did not do one problem in cost sheet. Job cost sheet. I shall be doing that after the chapter. Over it. The problem is involving this blanket rate versus departmental absorption rate. Can I proceed? Now, point number 7 or 8? Point number 8. Point number eight. Machine hover rate problems. Point number eight. Machine hover rate problems. Machine hover rate problems. Machine hover rate. M A C H A N E machine. H O U R hover. R A T E rate problems. Ne edi niya? Na. Point number eight or nine? Nine. Segregation of semi variable overheads. Segregation of semi variable overheads. Different methods. Segregation of semi variable overheads. Different methods. Segregation of semi variable overheads. Different methods. In bracket, cost sheet problem. We have one problem in cost sheet left in Amargaba. Now, that semi variable over I shall be doing after the chapter marginal costing and overheads. Like high low method, etc., will be left out. That will be doing a segregation of semi variable overheads. I can write cost sheet problem. Okay. These are all the issues one should be completing in this chapter called as what? Overheads. Okay. Now, let me give you a broad picture or idea about how this chapter flows okay then we can just go into the you know, say nitty gritties of the discussion or intricacies in the discussion through the problems and numbers okay now let us have a brief introduction to the chapter overheads and then proceed here when i give introduction etc i am not going to dictate any notes i'm not going to dictate any notes the reason is in module 2, whatever I speak in the class, I given in printed form. Okay. Instead of giving a tape recorder, I gave you what? Module 2. Now, so don't think that, sir, you have spoken so much, nothing has been what? Written. I did not uh, dictate it. That is avoided by giving the entire concept in what? Module 2. Whatever I discuss you hear, We'll do the problems and solution and some problem related uh, notes can be written here but not the concept notes uh, mainly because I given that in the module 2. There was supplementary extra I discussed, I'll be dictating it here. Can I put or not? Now, so now let us start with the introductory discussion to this chapter called as overheads. See, stop talking.
or your lovers are. They only keep on talking without any matter. I don't know. No. Or old people, they also want talk, old past and tall, both unproductive. Can I proceed? No. See, one of the main objective of cost accounting system, which normally an accounting system cannot do, is to find out cost per unit of a product. I don't know. We'll see, journal entries to trace the cost in the cost ledger accounting, the very unique feature of a cost accounting system is, or the main objective is, to find out cost per unit of a product. Is or no? No. Yeah, car manufacturing company like Ford and all would like to know the cost per car manufactured. Is or no? No. Yeah, mouse manufacturer would like to know the cost per mouse. A table manufacturer would like to know the cost per table. For what we calculate cost, that is called as cost object. It is called as what? Cost object. Cost object means for something we ascertain cost or not. For what we calculate cost, that is what we call as what? Cost object. For example, MTHGR may calculate cost for servicing a student. The cost object is what? Student. For student, you collect the cost. Is it not? No. For a table manufacturer, they calculate cost per table. What is table? Cost object. For the table, you collect the cost. Everybody, yes or no? For something, you spend the cost. Cost per what? Question is yes no. The what? We call as what? Cost object. Everybody, yes or no? Okay. Based on the cost object, we classify the cost into two types. Direct cost and then indirect cost. Already get, got introduced. Okay. Direct cost and then indirect cost. Mouse is a cost object. Okay. For manufacturing this mouse, I spend some cost or not? What are two types of cost? Spend direct cost and indirect cost. Direct cost can be directly identified with the cost object. Indirect cost is common cost incurred for multiple cost object that needs to be allocated or apportioned. Everybody following or not? Now, I'll just give a simple example. Suppose for MTH care, for MTH care this Nungambakam brand, suppose is a cost object. This set, it can also be a division or a center. We'll discuss it in final elaborately. Let us take, for example, the MTH care wants to find out cost per Nungambakam branch. Cost of what? Nungambakam branch. They want to find out. Okay. So, this room rent is a cost object or not? Is a cost or not? Yes. Nungambakam branch will be having a room rent. Will be having what? We need salary. And they want to need or not? He is an admission person here. We need salary. It may have what uh, Raja Gopal faculty say fees. It may have Pondi Arjan salary. So many expenses are incurred for the Nungambakam branch. Yes or no? In that I can say, the Nungambakam branch room rent is direct because it is only for Nungambakam branch. Right? But Raja Gopal salary is what? Indirect cost. The reason is what? I am working both at Nungambakam as well as what? Other branches also. Now it needs to be apportioned. Needs to be what? Apportioned. Everybody, yes or no? No. What is purely for that direct is direct. What is what? Common for number of cost of that becomes what? The indirect. That's why we classify the cost as a direct cost or what? Indirect cost. Respond. Yes or no? No. So when they want to manufacture a mouse, there are some costs which are directly incurred for every mouse, and there are some costs which are incurred for what? Multiple product, common cost, this needs to be what? Apportioned. Everybody, yes or no? The direct cost only we call as prime cost, and the indirect cost we call as what? Overheads. Point number one. Respond, yes or no? Okay, tell me. What are the cost of the mouse? It's direct cost plus what? Indirect cost. That is material inside the mouse, labor inside the mouse, and then what? Overheads inside the mouse. Yes or no? In a gross was cost is what? Material plus labor plus overheads. Three items of cost. Wait or not? Now. So metal inside the mouse plus labor inside the mouse plus overheads inside the mouse gives you what? The cost of the mouse. Yes or no? So the cost per unit is metal cost plus labor cost plus what overhead cost gives you cost per unit. Point number two, is or no? Yes, okay, now, inside this table, 
how much is direct material cost easily findable reason is because i know how much kgs of wood it consumes and what the cost per kg i know the direct metal inside the table right Direct labor also very easy because I know how many hours worker is spending on this table. I know what wages I pay him per hour. I can find out directly the direct wages for the table. Is or no? But the problem is how much is room rent inside the table? I cannot say. Right? How much is depreciation of machine inside this table? Nobody knows. Right? How much is a supervisor salary inside this table? Nobody knows. Is or no? Are you following what I am saying? How much is repairs and maintenance cost inside the table? Nobody knows. Are you following up? Because all those costs are not incurred for the table or incurred for what? Facilities provided to produce a table. Everybody has or no. They are not direct cost. Then what cost? Yeah, indirect cost. Tracing an indirect cost to the table manufacturer is a challenge. Yes or no? One of the greatest difficulty till date in any cost accounting system is tracing an indirect cost to what every unit produced is a challenge. Among that only, we'll be discussing in this chapter called as what? Overheads. Agenda put it So the chapter objective, what objective of the chapter? To find out overhead cost per unit. To find out what? Overhead cost per unit. Or overhead cost per table. Overhead cost per mouse and so on. I have to find out. Everybody understood or not? Now tell me, this chapter we are learning to find out what? Overall cost per table is the main aim. Yes or no? no? Sir, why so much you are shouting? Very simple. Okay. Add all the overhead cost. Factory rent, supervisor salary, depreciation, repairs and maintenance. Add all this. Divided by the table manufacturer, you get the answer. Bye-bye. Let us close the class. So why so much, sir? Shouting and all, okay, very simple, yeah? Add all the overhead cost, divided by what? Units produced, that gives you what? Overhead cost per unit. Why you worry about tracing and all? Very simple, overhead divided by what? Units produced, gives you overhead cost per unit, matter over. Are you falling or not? Yes, yes, correct, huh? yes, Then I will also be happy, will also be happy. Chapter is over, correct, huh? No. The problem is, that is correct. If I am company, if I am a company, manufacturing only one type of product. Suppose I am a company who is manufacturing this podium, that is a table to support electronic system. I am manufacturing laptops. I am manufacturing desktops. I am manufacturing cell phones. I am having what? Varieties of product manufactured using the same factory system. Are you what I am saying? In that case, we cannot say overhead cost divided by what? Number of units because uh, suppose I produce 1000 tables, 2000 mouth. I cannot say I am producing 3000. In a 3000 watt question arise. 1000 tables plus 2000 mouses is equal to 3000? 3000 addable what question arises now from a simple yeah. four donkeys plus five monkeys is equal to what nine balance what donkey a monkey a question arises everybody are you follow what i'm saying we cannot add what dissimilar items because I am producing varieties of product. So overheads by number of units is equal to overheads per unit is a very good system. If I manufacture what? Only one product because all my factory rent, uh, super everything is only for this table. Na. I divide by what? Number of table. Now what happens is the factory rent, the supervisor salary, all the overhead expenses are common cost not for one product, for what? Multiple product. In that case, how much is a room rent going to table? How much you go to what? Mouth. We should trace it or not? For that we need an elaborate system that is what we want to discuss in chapter called as what? Overheads. Everybody, are you following what I am saying? So now tell me, what objective of this chapter? To calculate overhead cost per unit. I did not have a chapter to find out material cost per unit. I don't have a chapter to find out what? Labor cost per unit because material cost is directly spent on every unit. Labor cost is directly spent on every unit. I need not trace it. It is already there. Yes or no? But overhead costs are what? Common cost. They are general costs are what? Common cost. Incurred for all the units, for varieties of product, that common cost should be specifically traced to what? Every unit produced. There is a challenge for a cost accounting system. Above that, we will be studying in this chapter called as overheads. I am making you understand what this chapter is all about. Everybody, point number two. Are you following? Okay, now. How we are going to 
trace the common cost to every unit produced. Question arises this now. It is having a sequence of procedures. It's going to have a sequence of procedure. I'll broadly explain it. More we can understand when you just do what? Problems. I don't want to get into the problem and then give you the context. I'll give you the context so that every time you do a problem, why we are doing it, you'll be able to understand it. Are you following what I'm saying? So now let us see how the overall cost is going to be what? Trace to the every unit of product produced is the issue. Everybody following or not? Now. So let's see the flow of overhead cost accounting and then go for the problems and solutions. Can you present or not? Now. See. First, why this noise, mother? I want a reason. Now, gamuno kanda ba? Okay, now. Suddenly, why start start talking? Okay, I cannot look like this and write. Yeah, I have to bend my head and only write. For silence, maintain. Can I proceed up? No, please. This is a three stage procedure, three levels. There's a procedure in tracing the ORS to every product produced. Okay. Now, these are all overheads, these are all departments, and these are all products. Okay. Please. Okay. Daily, I incur overheads, I pay factory rent. I pay the supervisor salary. I pass journal entries for depreciation of what fixed assets used in the factory. I incur repairs and maintenance. Like the few examples, I have for example power cost. All these are overheads. I daily incur the cost or not? No. Whenever any payment I make, I collect the nature of the payment through something called as SON, standing order number. Okay. Every expense item in a big company will be given a number, okay? 205 means what? A rent. It is meaning what expense? Rent. The watch will be having a number called as 205. It is called as what? Rent expense. For example, we have 372. A number will be given for what? Repairs and maintenance. Whenever you make a payment, you also in the voucher record for what purpose the payment is made that is recorded through a number called as what standing order number most of the cost accounting systems are computerized are you following what i'm saying so it will be able to identify it easily and through that i'll be paying overheads and these overhead costs are spent everybody is so no now this is the first step simple normal accounting can i pose it up now next the question is why the overhead costs are incurred? Why the overhead costs are incurred? For that, the first step we have to understand is companies or factories are divided into departments. Okay. I forgot to tell you, this chapter speaks about manufacturing overheads, does not speak about what? Administration and selling overheads. The reason is very simple. I want only manufacturing cost per unit. I don't want administration and selling because the period cost, no need to unitize it. You know, only product cost, express section of what? Cost of goods sold. When I value my mouse, what do I value of my mouse? Material, labor, and only production overheads and not administration and selling. That's an income statement item. I need not find out per unit. So this chapter fully, when I say the word overhead, I always mean what overheads? Manufacturing overheads only. I don't mean administration and selling. You don't get confused about that. So whenever you use the word overheads, I always mean what? Manufacturing overheads. Can I proceed or not? Now, come back to the discussion. Now, there is a factory of a company. That factory will be divided into number of departments. Right into what? Number of departments. Okay. The departments inside the factory will be classified into two types. Production departments 
and service department. Or two departments here, yeah? production departments and then service department. I'll give an example. That's a textile mill. That is a textile mill manufacturing what? Textiles. Okay. It has got different operation. That is spinning, that is weaving, that is printing. Three main operations. Spinning, weaving and then what? Printing. Spinning department makes cotton into what? Thread. Weaving department makes thread into what? A grey cloth. And the grey cloth is made as what? The colourful cloth through what? The printing department. Let's take three departments uh, which are performing uh, the work for manufacturing a uh, shirt or a sari, etc. Everybody is on home. So now that company is having three departments. A spinning department which performs what? Spinning activity. A weaving department which performs what? Weaving activity. A printing department that performs what? Printing activity. These are the three departments. Yes or no? These three departments are directly engaged in production and not? Yes. The departments are called as production departments. What departments are? Production departments. Now, all the three departments will be the, the big factory premises. Factory, I don't think only one room. Yeah? It is going to be what? A big compound of premise. It may even be a small township. Say, in sugar factory and all, it's like what? A town itself. Are you all what I'm saying? Now, in that factory, we have what? These three departments. Okay, next step. Apart from three departments, let me tell you two more departments in factory. There's a repairs and maintenance department. What department? Repairs and maintenance department. The work of the department is to maintain the machines in all the other departments in what? Working condition so that production can take place. Are you all following what I'm saying? Now, tell me, is repairs and maintenance department inside the factory, outside the factory, or inside the factory. Is it directly engaged in production or not? Um, not. It is going to help what? Production department in their production activity. It is called as what department? Service department. There's a factory canteen. There's what? A factory canteen that provides food to what? Employees in the factory. Okay, factory workers will be given what? Employees will be given food. So that is very famous in TVS. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, in that case, tell me, in such case, the Canteen is there or not? The canteen is administration is selling your production expenses or production is inside the factory only. It is a factory canteen. Everybody understand what I am saying? Now, the factory canteen is producing or not producing or not producing, but helping in what? The production department is production by giving food to their what? Employee. This is a service department. Everybody understand or not? Now, so departments inside the factory can be classified into two types. Production and then what? Service department. Production departments are directly engaged in production. Service department assist what? Production department in one way or other way. Everybody, are you following what I'm saying? Okay, now, see, let me just go for the discussion. In this problem, the factory has got three departments production department one, production department two, and the service department. Okay, two production department, one service department. Can I push or not? No. I spend various overheads. I pay factory rent, I pay supervisor salary, I incur depreciation. All these overheads are incurred. Tell me. Overhead is a loss of cost. Loss of cost. Tell me, what is the difference between loss and cost? Accounts are both debited. Debit loss. Debit also expense. Now tell me, what is the difference between a cost and an expense? A cost and a loss. What both are debit and no? Amount spent on both. Right or not? Now, what is the difference between a cost and a loss? What is cost? What is loss? Cost can be? Cost can be what? Regain or return back the money. After selling, cost can be what? Recover. I can even put loss in selling price and recover. I am only fixing selling price. Na. Cost makes me earn something. Loss does not make me earn. To some extent, right? Rumba simple. Yeah. Anything which I spend, for which if I get the benefit, that is cost. If the benefit is gone, it becomes a loss. Are you following? Are you following what I'm saying? Very simple, yeah? See, I purchased 10,000 kg of raw material at 10 rupees. 1 lakh rupees, yes or no? Isn't it correct? Huh? I purchased raw material 10,000 kg. How much rupees here? Yeah? 10 rupees. What the amount here? Yeah? 1 lakh I spent, yes or no? Out of the 1 lakh kg, 
90,000 kg consumed for production, 10,000 kg caught fire last. Out of the 1 lakh spent, what happens is 9,000 kg is used, it becomes a direct material consumed, it becomes a cost. And what is not used, now also not in stock, which can be used in what? Next year, what is destroyed by fire means, I paid money, I did not enjoy the benefit. I paid money, I did not enjoy what? Benefit. For what I paid money, but benefit could not be what? Enjoyed, it becomes what? Lost. I paid a worker wages. I paid a worker what? Wages. He comes to a fact in works. He becomes what? Wage cost. I pay him the wages. He comes to a fact in sleeps. He becomes what? Idle time loss. Are you understand what I am saying? That is, I pay wages for him to work. If he works, it becomes what? Cost. If he does not work, it becomes what? Loss. You paid fees to empty the car to come here and listen to the class. No. The fees is cost for your loss. If we come to the class and sleep, it is lost. If we come to the class late, it is what? Lost. If an absent, it is what? Lost. If we don't understand, it is also what? Lost. Now, only when you understand, listen, it becomes what? Cost. Everything is all known now. For anything which you spend, if you derive a benefit, that becomes what? Cost. If you don't get the benefit, it becomes what? Lost. All expenditure are made only to get the benefit. I am not giving donation. I am making what? Expense. Every expense gives you what? Benefit. So what we say is, the overhead spent, when I spend the overhead cost, I get a benefit out of it or not? <laughs> Distributed to the department based on the benefit received. Are you following? Huh? We call this what distribution? Primary distribution. We call this what distribution? Primary distribution. For example, why I pay rent? Tell me, I pay rent to the landowner. Why I pay rent? Because he gives me a right to occupy some floor space. Yes or no? no? I pay rent, the benefit of paying rent is, I get a space to occupy. Everybody, yes or no? no? When I pay factory rent, why I pay factory rent? Because I can occupy some square, uh, square feet or what? Square meter, for that I pay the factory rent. Yes or no? no? The factory rent should be apportioned between the departments in the ratio of what? The floor space occupied. There can be a one department occupying only 200 square feet, one occupying what? 8,000 square feet. More cannot be given what? The same rent amount. Yes or no? Now, I distribute the rent to the departments based on what? The square feet occupied. In the parade or not? No. Similarly, I pay supervisor a salary. I pay what supervisor a salary. Why I pay him salary? Because he supervises. The benefit of what I get is one. He supervises. He supervises whom? Employees. Now that means supervisor salary will be divided between what? The department in the ratio of number of employees. Are you following what I am saying? Because more employees, more the supervision work. Are you following what I am saying? Now, like that. Depreciation is due to what? The value of mission. Divided the ratio of what? The value of the missions. And uh, power in the ratio of what? The meter or the power point consumed. Like the repairs and maintenance based on what? Number of missions, they are what? Maintaining and so on. On some suitable basis, this is a common sense logic only, no need to buy hard. On some suitable basis, the overhead cost should be apportioned to what? Departments of the organization. That's called, we call as primary distribution of overhead. What is yeah? Primary distribution of overhead. I am giving you the overall idea of that chapter. Are you understanding it or not? No. So the question is very simple. Why overheads are incurred? It gives me benefit. Who is enjoying the benefit? The departments of the company. Okay. Why a parent? Because department occupies what? Flow space. Why I have supervised salary? Because department has got what? Employees. Why I have depression? Because departments have got what? Missions. Why I have power? Because department consumes what? Power. So the benefits are the overhead cost. Who is eating the benefit? Department. Give it to one department in the ratio of eating them. Is that what I am saying? In that case, that is what we call as what? The primary distribution of overheads. Everybody, yes or no? So, what happens is, at the end of primary distribution, all these overheads will be given to what? The departments of the organization. Point number one. Respond. Yes or no? Now, the overhead loses their names. It loses their what? Names. It is no longer rent. It is no longer power. It is no longer what? Supervisor salary. Now it becomes production department one overheads, production department two overheads, service department overheads and so on. From the overheads it becomes departmental overheads. Everybody, are you following what I am saying? Yes, 
என்ன புரிஞ்சுதான் சப்போஸ் திஸ் இஸ் 1 lakh total na it may be 30000 40000 30000 in the 30000 rent will be there supervisor salary will be there i don't know worry about the names it all becomes what department 1 overheads department 2 overhead service department overhead the overhead lose their name now they will be referred to what by the department number we call as departmental overheads everybody are you following what i am saying very simple i am raju gopal and uh, he may be vinay you may be arun he may be akshay she may be what uh, lakshmi so many names are there or not and what happens is all these names later becomes what andhra tamil nadu telangana kerala we all become what state wise what i am saying are you following what i am saying now and then becomes what indian us and so on where a person lose their name and it is going to get what the name of the state where he is staying so no like that the overhead lose their name now it will be referred as what departmental overhead because they gone into the departments are you able to follow what i am saying now this is what happens after the first stage called as what primary distribution of overheads everybody are you understanding or not why we are doing will be learning at the end can i proceed so now tell me what is primary distribution all the overheads are distributed to the departments can it distribute equally or no in the ratio of the benefit that department gets from the overhead cost everybody is yes no the benefit should be judged only by us rent in the ratio of what flow space power in the ratio of what kilowatt hours and so on on some suitable basis based on benefit derived the overhead should be given to what departments everybody is yes so no all the question is why we incur overheads because department gets the benefit out of it so it is given to the department first step over are you following or not no at the end of the primary distribution overheads are with p1 p2 s1 yes or no next question is why service department is incurring overheads why service department is incurring overheads because it gives service production department kada ba why service department is incurring overheads for whose benefit for the benefit of our production department the department is existing to give the service to our production department since it is incurring overheads to give the service to our production department give the service department overheads back to our production department give it back to our production department which we call as secondary distribution we call as what secondary distribution now can i give it equally or no in the ratio of the services obtained are you understand what i am saying now suppose this is a repairs and maintenance department yes one is what repairs and maintenance department i should apportion the ratio of what number of repairs done or what number of missions on some suitable basis in the ratio of services given it should be given back to what the production department that is what we call as what the secondary distribution everybody is so no always we ask a question and then give now why overheads are spent because it gives benefit to what department so I give the overheads to what departments why service you are incurring overheads because it is giving service to the production department so give the overheads back to our production department which we call as what secondary distribution now respond is yes no no tell me at the end of secondary distribution the order with all the three departments are only production department only production department now the orders are with the production department everybody is yes or no now the question is why production department is incurring overheads here because to produce x and y are you following because to produce what x and y the department is the production department is incurring overhead because it has to produce what product it is incurring only for what product so this order should be given to what products on some suitable basis respond is yes or no this is machine department this is what assembly department machine dominated labor dominated based on machine hours spent give it to what x and y based on what labor hours spent give it to what x and y so the process of giving the production department overheads to what ultimate product produced is called as what absorption of overheads respond is yes or no at the end of absorption overheads given to products or not yes or no chapter road bekar update is what to find out overhead cost of x and y we have found out are you following what i am saying the tracing here will understand what i am saying that's how the common rent how it goes to product x through what this particular procedure called as what the overhead accounting procedure everybody follow what i am saying now tell me rent is that pen is that i cannot lend a rent to pen kada 
In a rent is not directly incurred for pen. That's not what I'm saying. How the rent goes into pen? Very simple. The rent goes to the department based on flow space occupied. The service one goes to what? Production one based on what? Service as renter. From the production department, through a machine or something goes to what? Product. Ultimately, rent also goes into the product. That's one. Yes or no? So, in the inner at car, now I have to do what? Tracing directly to what? A product. That's what we call as an overhead accounting procedure or overhead tracing procedure. In the broad framework of this particular chapter, Inside there's a lot of issues and nitty gritties are involved. Above that only the chapter will be elaborately discussed. Everybody able to understand the sequence of the overhead chapter or not? No. Tell me simply how many stages are there in overhead tracing? Three stages. What three stages? Primary distribution, secondary distribution, absorption. What is primary distribution? Distributing the overhead through the department on some suitable basis. What is secondary distribution? Service department over has given back to the production department. What absorption? Production department over has given to the products manufacturer or the three shares in overhead accounting. So we'll be completing in two classes primary distribution and second distribution. And then from absorption only, we can say the real chapter of complexity starts. Everybody, can I proceed or not? No. This introduction I am not going to dictate. Why? It is there in the module 2. One can read and understand it. Now, can I start with the first problem regarding what? Primary distribution or not? Now, so overall view of that chapter, have you understood or not?